I could put up with some criticism, but if you start calling me an idiot and whatnot in my comments, it's going to get deleted. But if you don't agree with it, you could comment and I'll reply. But I'm not going to put up with calling people idiots because I don't know how to calculate a lot. Like, are you serious? Yes, I do. Anyway, so let's go over what's going on here. So in case there's any, well, there's a lot of in clarity on it because these are complicated subjects, LC tank circuits and what's actually happening. Now, I don't agree with the main um, viewpoints on Wikipedia and whatnot. Okay, stars, the star capacitors are charged at 20 volts. All the other ones are empty. Then we connect the circuit. This labels how many volts transferred and what happened in these configurations. Standard, connect two capacitors together. One charge at 20, one charge at zero. Use a diode or don't use a diode, don't matter. They're going to balance at 10 because voltage is balanced and there's no form of gain or anything weird happening here. It's just transferring energy. B, we put a coil in between. Now they transfer at 10 the exact same, but something else happens, which I'm going to show you in a little while on the oscilloscope shots. Okay, something happens here, but it gets petered out. Now we're going to block it. We're going to put a diode so the power could only go one way. So no power could return from this side going back. We're going to put a diode. We're going to measure it, dump it, measure it. And guess what? We broke the balance. Now we have five volts in this one and it sent 15 into this one. We still have a total of 20, but something weird happened because we broke the balance. How the heck did that happen? I'm going to show you. And finally, we take another capacitor and another diode and connect it coming out of the coil back into itself to see what happened. And guess what? Now they balance again, 10 and 10, but this one catches a magical 5 volts. Where the heck did that 5 volts come from? I'll give you a hint. It came from the same place this 5 volts came from, right? Now, why is this one 10 and this one 5? Because these negatives connect. So... So if this one catches an additional uh, five, it's going to push current out the negative. Anything that goes in the negative, need, uh, in the positive, needs to come out the negative. And where does this negative go? Into this negative. Okay. So what did that just do? It put more negative in here. That five volts that we caught here extra, it pushed that five volts into here, which pushed it back into the circuit and petered out. Now, how did this happen? It happened from back EMF. You see, the right-hand rule versus the left-hand rule. The coil itself inducts in itself. So if you're sending current in, it goes along around a revolution, and that revolution, the next revolution in line, inducts current going the opposite way as you're sending it in. And every revolution is inducting with the one after it, and it keeps inducting into itself, making a loop. So basically, just like you know, the law is that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. It happens on a coil, too. Okay. Now, can we separate it and get two times the energy? Probably not. But we can separate it and get some, but there's going to be losses. Okay. Now, take a regular capacitor with 20 volts. Um, don't have a coil here. All right? Let's just take this coil out. Short this capacitor into itself. What happens? The capacitor goes to zero. You'll never get this... To capacitor to go to the negative voltages. If you could, you have something special because that means you sent more out than it had there. It actually not only balanced, it more than balanced. Huh? It goes to zero every time until you put a coil in. Now it'll still go to a zero with a coil by itself because it's going to bounce and 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 bounce until it gets to zero until it dissipates everything. Now that's an LC tank circuit. But how did it bounce if it only goes to zero? Because the coil's adding something. It's adding back EMF. It's creating back EMF, and it's bringing voltage from outside into the circuit, and it needs to do something with it. So it just peters it out. Now if you put a diode here and connect it, you send 20 volts, the 20 volts goes through to the other side. This side takes the 20 volts, so now it's zero. And the extra energy from the outside, from this induction, also can't go this way because it's blocked, so it's forced back through the coil into the negative side, and the negative side raises uh, 5 volts. So the negative side is hotter 5 volts than this side. We have negative 5 volts. Absolutely fascinating. So let's get to some scope shots. 
Okay, take a capacitor, fill it up to 20 volts, short it into itself with no coil. 20 volts come out and go right to the negative line, uh, right to the zero line. The white is the zero. Picture this white line as a trampoline bed for our demonstration here. 20 volts come out, it goes to zero, and capacitor is at zero balance. There's no gain. It didn't gain anything down here. It only sent out 20 because it only had 20. Next, put a coil in there with no diode, an LC tank circuit, and short the capacitor into itself. It will send the full 20 volts, just like before, but then, look, there's a little more voltage that gets sent. Where the heck did this voltage come from? It came from the coil, because the coil inducted more energy into it, and it sent it into the negative side. But because there's no diode and no load to use this on, what does it do? Now your negative side is higher than your positive side, so your negative side sends to your positive side. Now your positive side's a little higher than your negative side, so it sends back to the other side. And that side's a little higher, sends back to the other side, and it, it, it rings until it peters out because it don't know what to do with this extra voltage because there's no load and it's making extra voltage, but what does it do with it? So it just keeps setting it back and forth, back and forth, like a ping pong table as it peters out. Okay, so... Now, I want to measure this. I want to see what the heck is going on here. I want to get more, you know, I want to save this instead of letting it peter out. So I'm going to put a diode here. I'm going to block it so it can't bounce back up. It can't go back this way. It just has to go one way. So if there's any gain, we're going to catch it. Huh? That's what we're doing. Now it goes to 20 volts. It goes to zero. It goes down almost to the bottom. Exact same as here, almost to the bottom. A little less because remember we have a diode and there's going to be a little bit of voltage drop from the diode So it goes almost to the bottom, but now it can't send it back the other way because we have a diode there So what happens the capacitor ends up at negative 5 volts because it caught the gain or what I consider what I'm thinking is the gain Okay, so let's look at some current and <clears throat> go through this so it could be argued that um, yeah, we're gaining voltage by sacrificing some amperage because, you know, higher the amps, the lower the volts, lower the volts, higher the amps, all that jazz. And that's a very intelligent statement and that could have some bearing on this, but I don't believe that's what's happening. So the blue one, I'm measuring the current in these exact same scenarios. The first one, shorting the cap into itself. We get one fast, quick, heavy duty spike of current. The blue, boom. One big current. Okay, that's what we got. The next one with the coil that has no diode, the LC tank circuit. Now, we got a nice spike of current, but not nearly as much as here. And then it came out, and then the current went this way, current went this way, and it started to peter out. Okay, so one would say this current went, you had much more current here than you had here. And that's true if you don't look at time reference. Now let's look at the time reference. This current had one big spike, but instantaneously and did not cover any time. It was just one quick pulse, boom. Where this one had less current as a measurement, but lasted for much longer. Look how spread out this is here as opposed to here, okay? So if you take the time variance, which is why we measure in joules, not watts, because watts, you need to know how many seconds exactly and time everything perfectly with the time delineation, and we don't want to do that because that's way too much, way too complicated and too error prone, so we use joules out of a capacitor in farads or microfarads, and we make the conversions so we could get accurate numbers without time reference, okay? So that commenter, who's saying stuff about, oh, you know, the power is watched and the volts type ain't, and no. Sure, it is, but you can't measure how many you're sending without a time reference. And in this quick thing that happens in microseconds, nanoseconds, we're not going to be able to get an accurate time reference. So we got to do it in joules, hence why I'm using capacitors. Okay, sorry about that. Now, on this one, sure, we lost amperage, as I'm saying, this one had greater spike of amperage, but this amperage lasted for much longer, okay? And I'm willing to bet if one could do the measurements in time by the nanoseconds, 
which I don't even know if it's possible. I don't know if there's a jewel counter out there. I've never been able to find one. Anyway, I bet you if you did do the comparison, this amperage total, in respect for the time variance, is probably equal to this amperage, not including these up spikes and down spikes. Okay, now the last test, we put the diode there to stop the ringing and to store the gain. And what happens? Pretty much the exact same thing is up here. We get the initial down spike, the initial down spike, and up, because the amperage ceases to flow, and we still have the time variable in here, just like before, which is not up here. And now we just stored all that extra voltage in the capacitor, which is giving me negative five volts. So, um, uh, well, you know, that's, that's basically what I'm working with, and I'm tapping into this negative 5 volts to run motors with and to feed back other batteries and to do stuff with to see if I could use it efficiently. Can you use this initial voltage plus this voltage, and does that put you over the input? Possibly, but I still need to verify this, and that's what I'm working on. Okay, now before I mention something about... Um, I was going to explain, which I will real quick because I only have three more minutes of this video before it ends. So energy, where does it come from? All energy comes from the great source of the earth wanting to balance all of it. A combustion engine, okay? It doesn't run off ethanol or petrol. It does, but that's not the source of the power. The source is the earth because the petrol explodes and causes a... Um, a difference in uh, pressure. The combustion chamber has lots of pressure. The bottom chamber has like no pressure. Two different pressure units. So the earth wants to balance that out. It doesn't like imbalances. So it pushes and tries to balance the pressure out. Now we put our hand in between, install a piston, and make the pressure push, push down the piston, which does a bunch of mechanical conversions and eventually spins our wheels. That's where the energy comes from. Um, electricity works the exact same way. It comes from an imbalance. So we run a magnet past a coil. The charges get split. One side has all negatives. One side has all positives. We split the charges. Uh, and so nature does not like the imbalance. So what does it do? It only wants the balance. It sends from the positive to the negative in attempts to balance out those charges. And what do we do? We put our little circuitry in between to make it do work because we want to tap nature's power to balance. So if people ask, where does free energy come from and whatnot? My answer is it comes from the same place that all energy do, which is the balance from Earth's uh, power resources that it unleashes unlimitedly to keep the balance. So is this possible to extract free energy like this using back EMF of a coil in this fashion? Um, I believe yes. Uh, uh, now, there's a lot of ramifications and ifs and whatnot in it and things you cannot do that kill it. Like this basic tank circuit here, it kills it. You see, it kills it. Why? Because we're tying the negatives together. It's all enclosed in one circuit and we can't extract it. Okay? Like if there is a gain going in here, that gain is going to come out the negative. And where is that gain from the negative going to go? Into this negative. So it just killed the gain by pushing all the gain into this negative, which pushes positive back into the circuit. And then it peters out. But now we just put all that gain into a negative terminal, which pushed it out of the positive. So where's the gain? It's gone. It's gone. How do you get it back? I don't know yet. But it's there. It's making a gain, I believe. But it's very hard to extract or figure out how to take that gain out of the system without wasting the gain within the system. So anyway, that's what we're working on. That's my explanation. Call me crazy. Call me conspiracy theory. But I don't accept the answers, and I'm going to keep going with it until I know for sure. Thank you.